Do Disney World tickets expire? Can you buy park tickets outside of the Disney website? And can you let your friends borrow your single day ticket? We are here to answer a lot of park ticket questions today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and I'm here to tell you that this could be the most important DFB video you're gonna watch before your trip. Well, this one in the Disney Genie Plus one, go watch that one too. Disney World Park tickets may seem like a pretty straightforward concept, but they're actually a lot more complex than you think. So let's cover all the important details that you'll need to know before you seal that park ticket deal so you can be confident and ultimately really happy about your purchase. We're gonna cover a lot in today's video, so make sure to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash park tickets so we can send you a complete PDF of everything we talk about today straight to your inbox completely free. Let's start with the important basics, then work our way up from there. There is more than one ticket option. When you go to make a park ticket purchase, you're not just going to have one choice or two choices. You'll have three different options to choose from. There's the single day park ticket that'll get you into a park for one day. There's the park hopper ticket that's going to allow you to visit multiple parks in one day for an extra 65 bucks on top of your regular ticket price. And there's the park hopper plus ticket that'll allow you to visit multiple parks in one day and receive an equal amount of days for an extra Disney activity of your choice, like one of the Disney water parks, Typhoon Lagoon or Blizzard Beach, or around a golf or mini golf on one of the Disney courses, a Park Hopper Plus is going to cost an extra $85 on top of your regular ticket price. So each park ticket has its different benefits and setbacks, but here's why you choose one option over the other. If you're just looking to spend your time at one park per day and you wanna choose the cheapest ticket option, the single day ticket is just fine and dandy. If you only have limited time in Disney World, however, and you wanna make sure you see as much of each of the parks as possible, or you only really wanna see a few options at one park, but don't really plan on investing an entire day there, then the park hopper is a nice perk that'll give you some more flexibility for your day. And if you wanna hit up a water park during your visit, the Park Hopper Plus can help save you money on purchasing a full water park ticket, but only if you're already planning on jumping from park to park in the first place. We're going to talk more about water park tickets later on, but buying water park tickets individually could be a better choice if you're not invested in park hopping whatsoever. Also, do not get the Park Hopper Plus option solely for the mini golf perk. The miniature golf courses like Fantasia Mini Golf and Winter Summerland only cost like $12 to $14 per person per game. So again, if you're not already planning on getting a Park Hopper ticket, adding 85 bucks on top of each ticket just for mini golf doesn't make a whole lot of sense financially. All right, whatever option you do choose, you'll always have that base single day ticket price you'll need to pay. But how much is that base price exactly? Well, it gets confusing. Ticket prices change. You know how when you're trying to book a hotel, prices will vary based on the time of year? And when you're flying somewhere, the more popular flights are gonna cost more? Well, that's how Disney World park tickets work now too. Park ticket prices are broken up into three different seasons, value, regular, and peak season. And within these seasons, ticket prices will fluctuate between $109 and $159 per person. So when do each of these seasons actually take place? For value season, you're gonna find the best ticket prices around back to school time. August and September tickets often fall into the lower end of the price spectrum. And with some tickets at the end of August as low as $107. Regular season, well, it's kind of throwing us for a loop this year. Usually we'd place January and February into the value season, but it seems winter ticket prices for 2023 are getting as high as $143 per ticket by mid-February. Though cheaper tickets as low as $119 can still be found on certain days earlier in January. May tends to be an interesting time of year, too late for spring break, but mostly too early for summer vacation, so prices are pretty middle ground and stick to the 130s but get higher toward the end of the month. Strangely enough, June prices, per the release of this video, currently fall in the same range as February this year. But again, things could change if demand spikes those prices upward the closer we get to the season, because yep, they can change. And peak season starts around spring break time. You'll see consistently higher price tickets ranging around $135 to $140 range throughout March and April. Smack dab in the middle of summer vacation in July, you're gonna find prices pretty high at the start of the month around 4th of July but they fall into a mid-price range for the remainder of the month so far. As the holidays roll in throughout October, November, December, you're gonna start seeing your highest ticket prices. Both November and December cap off at 149 for certain days, and those will be Disney's predicted busy days of the year. Now, another little tricky part of buying tickets, more park days equal cheaper tickets, as Disney likes to say. 
The longer you stay, the less you pay per day. Right, Disney likes to reward its guests for spending more time in their parks. Why? Because you probably stay at a hotel longer and spend more money in the parks if you stay longer. So the more park days you tack onto your trip, the cheaper your tickets for those days will be. Let's look at the average ticket range Disney shows you on their website. In a hypothetical scenario where you're paying $109 for your ticket, which is very rare nowadays, but that's a different conversation for a different video, paying for one park day and one park day only isn't gonna change that price point. But if you tack on two or three park days, that price will drop down to 107 per day. And if you're going for four days, the price drops to 106 per day. Five days, now you're starting to dip under the $100 range and enter into the $91 per day category. By the time you're booking a whopping 10 park days, AKA the max number of days you can purchase single day tickets for, you will have dropped that price to $56 per day. Why does Disney change the prices like this? Because like I said, they're gonna make that money up through other purchases you're gonna wind up making on food, merchandise, hotels, etc. So when you're budgeting for your park tickets, consider how many days you're actually going to need tickets for. Just keep in mind that ticket prices are subject to change, so the sooner you can book those, the better. So now that I've talked about how prices are determined, let me give you a tip that could completely change the way you book your Disney World vacations from here on out. You pay for a range of days and that can save you money. Now, this can be a little sneaky, so stick with me here. When you pay for park tickets, you're not actually paying for specific days. Instead, you're paying for a range of days. Let's say you're looking to visit the parks for three days in September, and let's say you plan to be in the parks the 21st through the 23rd. The price you pay for all three days is gonna be whatever you choose as your starting date. If I choose September 23rd as my starting date in the parks, the per day cost is $125, which makes my three day ticket 374 before tax. But if I choose September 19th as my starting date, the per day cost of that ticket goes to $114, which makes my three day ticket $340 before tax. That ticket is still usable on my planned three days and I don't need to switch up my whole vacation in order to get that cheaper price. Still with me? Great. Here's where the range comes into play. When you choose a ticket start date on the Disney World price calendar, Disney will show you the days you're actually paying for. So you're not paying for three days consecutively. You're paying for a range of five days in which you can choose which of the three days within that time frame you wanna make into your park days. This means two things. One, you can make reservations for the parks however you want to in that five day range. You can get them all out of the way in the first three days, you can save them till the last three days, or you can break them up so you have rest days in between. And two, this means you can pick the cheapest day possible closest to your trip as your starting date without actually having to be in the parks on that specific day, if you don't wanna be. This tip is only gonna work if you're buying tickets on their own. If you're buying a vacation package, it'll lock you into the days on your hotel reservation for the start date of your ticket. But hold on, these prices could change again and not because of the different seasons. Let's talk about price ticket deals next. You're not always at the complete mercy of the prices staring back at you from the Disney World ticket calendar. Sometimes you may be able to find a deal that'll get you your tickets for a lot less. Park tickets can be purchased in package deals, which bundle tickets and Disney Resort stays for one single price. Now, do me a favor, familiarize yourself with the special offers, deals, and discounts page on the Disney World website. This will be your guide for all things vacation package savings. And guess what? It's a really tiny link way down at the bottom. So if you don't know how to find it, Disney's not gonna help you. This page will be your guide for all things vacation package savings. There'll be savings available for a specific group of people sometimes, like Disney Visa card holders, annual pass holders, Disney Plus subscribers, DVC members, and US military members. But every now and then, the savings will open up for everybody, and those are called general public discounts. Most recently, we found a deal where you can save up to $400 on a four-night, four-day Walt Disney Travel Company room and ticket package at some hotels. And this deal varies, of course, depending on the details of your trip, like when you're going and where you're staying, but savings are savings, so one way or another, you'll want to look into it. When I find these deals, I tell my DFB newsletter folks ASAP because I know how quickly they can get snatched up once they're released. So if you sign up for our newsletter, you can be part of this insider knowledge and never miss out on one of these discounted opportunities again. Now, let's tackle a question that a lot of people have because it makes a big, big difference to how many tickets you buy. Your park ticket can expire. 
Back in the day, it couldn't, now it can. So let's go back to our hypothetical scenario. We're wanting three days in the park, which we can use during a five day range, however we want. And although this sounds like a lot of freedom, it's not nearly as much freedom as you used to have with your park tickets. Cause you used to be able to use these three days literally whenever you wanted to, whether it was days, months, or years out. Back then, if you bought like a 10 day park ticket, you could use those days whenever you wanted over the course of multiple years. Like use a couple of days this year, come back next year for spring break, use six days, and then you've still got a few days left to come down over Thanksgiving or something. But now you've got a cutoff date. If you don't visit the parks within that range of time, then your tickets will expire. In the case of a 10 day ticket, your tickets will expire 14 days after your selected park date. And you must use all your tickets within that allotted amount of time. The only way you can add more time to this range is by adding water park tickets and or park hoppers to your purchase, which will add an extra day to your valid use period. So what happens if your park ticket expires? Well, unfortunately you can't cancel your park ticket for a refund once it's purchased, but you can use your expired tickets as a credit toward any future park tickets you might wanna buy, as long as the price for the new tickets is equal to or higher than the price you originally paid. So that's a special tip you don't want to forget. If something happens and you end up having expired tickets, you can use those as a credit toward future park tickets. All right, hold on. If this expiration date for tickets wasn't always in place, what's going to happen with the Disney park tickets still lingering from years past? Do they expire too? Great news for all you park ticket hoarders. You may still be able to use those old park tickets you've still got lying around from the late 90s and early 2000s. According to the Disney World website, Disney World will honor your tickets as long as there are remaining days and the tickets are not expired. So if you purchased theme park tickets in 2003 or earlier, you should still be able to redeem any unused days. But if you purchased your tickets in 2004 and beyond, they're not going to be any good to you anymore unless, again, you want to use them as a credit toward future ticket purchases. You can always call Disney's number 407-939-1289 if you want to clarify any of the ticket technicalities that still seem a little bit hazy. But word of advice, I wouldn't rely on these older tickets for any upcoming trips. Things can get a little tricky with the Park Pass reservation system now in place, so it's better to purchase new tickets than bring your old tickets to guest relations during your trip to get them transferred over to a more updated and usable format. But you can do it if they're not expired. Okay, that was a lot of info, but again, if you want a visual to refer back to later, we can send one to your inbox for free if you drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash park tickets. I'm a visual person, so I love having these PDFs available, and you might feel the same. All right, let's move on to a less dense ticket topic now. How to access your park tickets. There are three ways to use those tickets once you finally figure out how to buy them. Method one, the good old fashioned physical ticket. You can pick up a plastic ticket card at any guest relations location, including the Disney Springs Welcome Center, which is right next to Deluxe Burger. Method two, you can link them to a magic band. On your My Disney Experience app, scroll down and find the magic bands and more option. As long as you've already got your park tickets and park pass reservations all linked to your account, you'll be able to use this section to link your magic band to your account as well. This will automatically connect all your park tickets, reservations, photo pass photos, and Genie Plus info to your magic band immediately. And method three, use Magic Mobile. When you're logged on to your My Disney Experience account through the app and you've already made your ticket purchases and reservations, you can choose to access all that info virtually by setting up Magic Mobile. To do this, just tap the Disney Magic Mobile option, then tap Set Up Pass. The app should walk you through the rest of the steps from there. What this will do is create a digital ticket that'll automatically download into your Apple Wallet for iPhone users or Google Pay for Android users. Now, Disney park tickets and the way we manage them have changed a lot over the past couple years. For instance, you want to check park pass availability before you buy your tickets. Ever since the parks reopened after the historic 2020 closures, buying a park ticket isn't good enough to get you in the parks anymore. After you purchase your park tickets, you'll need to immediately make those park pass reservations. A park pass reservation is like any other dining or hotel reservation. Its purpose is to guarantee you a spot in the park. And without that reservation, you won't be allowed into the park, even with a ticket purchase. But don't worry, making a park pass reservation is free and easy to make. In fact, Disney will direct you to making your park pass reservations 
right after you purchase your tickets and they'll lead you through the process from there. We've also got a super handy dandy little step-by-step -step tutorial for you as well. But before you buy your tickets, be sure to check the Park Pass availability calendar first. Park days do tend to book up, especially around busier times of the year. And Disney doesn't want you to buy tickets and not be able to apply them to the days you're really wanting to visit. So click on that park reservation calendar at the top of the ticket purchase page on the Disney World website before you take any other steps forward toward your big trip. And if the days you're wanting to visit are still open, great, then grab your tickets and book your reservations ASAP, especially for Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Those tend to fill up the fastest. Now, since I briefly mentioned park hoppers already, let's go into a little more detail about those. Are park hoppers really a major benefit that you're gonna wanna add to your single day ticket or can they become more of a nuisance and throw you off your groove? Well, park hoppers have rules. Much like park pass reservations, the rules attached to park hopper tickets changed after the 2020 closure. Before, if you had a park hopper add-on, you could hop to and from whatever parks you wanted, whenever you wanted. But now, you'll only be able to park hop after 2 p.m. You've got the Park Pass reservation system to thank for that. Guests must enter into the park they made reservations for first. Then, once 2 p.m. rolls around, you can jump between parks to your heart's content for the rest of the afternoon and until close. If you're not sure how you feel about that rule and whether it's gonna help or hinder your Disney day, here's the good news. You don't have to decide on a park hopper right now. You can still purchase your single day tickets and make sure you've got those park pass reservations locked in place. Then if you decide later on that, yeah, you really do want the ability to visit multiple parks in one day, you can add that option to your tickets from your My Disney Experience account. And you can make changes to your tickets prior to midnight the day before your ticket's first valid use date. Just tap on the Tickets and Passes tab and select the Change Tickets option for the tickets you want to modify. You can even upgrade your tickets once you get to Disney World. You'll just need to swing by any of the booths at the front of the park so a cast member can help you get it all set up. But the 2 p.m. rule doesn't just impact when you get to visit your second or third or even fourth park of the day. It also impacts another premium Disney service. How does Genie Plus work with a park hopper? Okay, got another tricky to explain concept here for you, but for those of you who are planning on getting Disney Genie Plus and Park Hoppers, you're gonna need to know this. First, quick recap of Disney Genie Plus. Disney Genie Plus is a surge premium service on your My Disney Experience app. With it, you'll be able to book Lightning Lane reservations for one ride at a time, and that'll give you the chance to bypass the main queue lines for those rides. There's a lot more to it than that, of course. You can always learn more about this planning tool through that Disney Genie video that I suggested earlier. Now, when you select a ride to snag a lightning lane for via the standard Genie Plus service, you're not gonna be able to pick your return time. Instead, the soonest return time available will be assigned to you. And this is very important for all you park hoppers out there. Why? Because you won't be able to make lightning lane reservations for any other parks you wanna hop to until the lightning lane time frame shows 2 p.m. availability for everyone. Now you're more than welcome to start immediately booking lightning lanes for the park you've made reservations for that you'll be starting in for the day, but any other ride reservations are gonna have to wait. Now this doesn't mean you have to wait until 2 p.m. to start booking rides for other parks. You just have to wait until the return time for the lightning lanes for those rides have reached the 2 p.m. window, meaning you could be in your first park of the day when availability for the other lightning lanes at the other parks opens up. Let's use an example. Say you're in Magic Kingdom in the morning, that's your first park of the day, and you know you're gonna wanna ride Slinky Dog Dash over in Disney's Hollywood Studios when you park hop over there in the afternoon. Keep an eye on the Slinky Dog Dash Lightning Lane time frame. As long as that time frame is before 2 p.m., you're not gonna be able to book that Lightning Lane, but as soon as it hits after 2 p.m., you can book Slinky Dog Dash. That's kind of how it works. And that could be sooner in the day or later on, depending on how busy the parks are and how fast those lightning lanes are being snatched up. So keep checking on them periodically throughout your day, just in case those 2 p.m. windows for the other parks pop up sooner than you think. Okay, ready to add Genie Plus to your park ticket? Here's how it's done. Genie Plus has changed in a lot of ways since it launched last October. One of those ways being the way you add this service to your park ticket. At first, you could add Genie Plus at the same time you purchased your park tickets, but now you can 
can only get Genie Plus added the day of your park visit, starting at midnight. So here's how to get it all taken care of in just a few easy steps. Step one, go to the My Disney Genie Day tab on your My Disney Experience app. Step two, select the My Day tab. And step three, choose the Get Genie Plus for Today link. And ta-da, the app will lead you through the rest of the purchasing steps from there. But once your Genie Plus is added, you'll be able to start making Lightning Lane reservations as early as 7 a.m. Before we get any further with the park ticket details though, I need to warn you about something important, very important. Disney park tickets are expensive and Disney park tickets are in high demand. So internet scammers or third party condo salespeople, they know what you want. You want an affordable Disney World trip. And if you can avoid paying an excessive amount for park tickets, you'll be happy as a clam. So these places will give you delusions of grandeur, advertising things like $50 Disney tickets sold here or even free Disney tickets available now. That is after you tour all these different vacation homes you can't afford. These sites claim to have good savings, but if they don't have any credibility to stand on, then they more than likely don't have your best interests in mind. Even if you've heard friends use these third-party sites successfully in the past, it's always best to err on the side of caution. There are some third-party sites out there that do have reliable savings. Sometimes we'll see discounted tickets at Sam's Club or Costco, and those are great. But just keep in mind that if you do purchase through a third-party site and something happens that disrupts your trip, like say a hurricane, Disney's not gonna be able to help you reschedule anything. You'll have to rely on the third-party site instead and see what their policies say, which may involve a whole lot of extra research on your end. You might also wanna look into booking a reliable travel agent to help get all your Disney ducks in a row and help you shake off the headache of tracking all these savings down yourself. Travel agencies like our friends over at Small World Vacations can help find you vacation packages that'll give you the most bang for your buck. And here's the awesome part, they're totally free to use. Let them know Disney Food Blog sent you and say hi to Sue for me. But if you're buying your Disney tickets on your own, don't fall for the scammers. What I usually tell people is there's really nobody who's selling Disney tickets for a discount that matters that you want to mess with. Just buy them from Disney and that way everything's on the up and up. But here's the cheapest Disney park ticket of them all. Some guests get free tickets. If you have kids under three years old joining your Disney World vacation, they will not cost you a cent. I mean, they've already cost you hundreds and thousands of dollars, but at Disney World, they're not gonna cost you anything. <laughs> kids who are two years old and younger can get into the parks for free. And bonus savings, these kids will also be able to eat free at the table service buffets too. All right, let's go ahead and skip to the part where everyone in your travel group now has their park tickets purchased and their park passes. So what's next? It's time to be sure everyone in your party is connected before you leave. Disney World isn't an every person for his or herself mindset. You're all a package deal. You're a team now conquering the parks together. And that means you'll need to make sure everyone's tickets are linked to the same My Disney Experience account beforehand. If you purchase your tickets all together, this part will be easy. You'll all be connected under the same account the tickets were purchased under, which means you can now make reservations and modifications for anyone who's part of that group. But let's say your friend bought their tickets through their own account. You can still link these into your group. If your friend is close by, then they can show you their personal linking QR code found under their My Disney Experience profile. From there, you can scan the code to automatically link it to your account. This is so much easier than it used to be, y'all. It used to be just a real headache to get people connected, and these QR codes have made life so much better in Disney World. And if they've got a magic band that's already all linked up to their account, you can also tap their band to accomplish the same thing. But if your friend is further away, you can always have them send you the manual code, which will pop up right underneath the QR code section, so you can type that in instead. If you want to link a friend or family member via QR or manual code, just scroll down to the link to account option in your My Disney Experience menu and choose either the camera, tap, or type ID option. Ta-da! Now you're all stuck with each other. And like I said, this is so much easier than it used to be. But what happens when you get to Disney World and you're trying to get into the parks and everything goes wrong? Well, I don't know whether this will put your mind at ease or not, but just know that park ticket mistakes happen every single day, every last one of them. I'm not telling you this to freak 
you out or anything, but rather to let you know that if you scan your ticket at the front gate and the entrance scanner gives that blue warning instead of the bright green, that doesn't mean this is the end for you. You're not going to get escorted out of the most magical place on earth or anything. Disney's going to work with you to figure out what's going on, so hang tight. If you notice that whatever situation's going on isn't going to be easily fixed by a front gate cast member, immediately request to talk to the park's guest services so you can save time and help others behind you get into the park faster instead of holding them up. Oftentimes, guest services will be able to pinpoint the issue and get it squared away, or at least show you what went wrong. But if you want to try to avoid making any easy mistakes that could trip you up before you're trying to enter the parks, check yourself for the following before you get to the front gate. Are you using the correct park ticket or magic band? In the past, I've accidentally used an old park ticket and of course was denied entry. Are you using the same finger for the identification check? I'll talk about this more in a second, but when you use your ticket for the first time, you'll be required to choose a finger to scan for fingerprint identification for the remainder of your visit. If you scan, say, your thumb, but you accidentally scan your index finger the next time around, you're going to get the blue warning light. And did you make a park pass reservation for this park? If it's been a while since you reserved your park pass reservations, make sure you actually ended up at the park you're supposed to be at for the day. Listen, I know it sounds silly, but it happens. We've even had DFB reporters make reservations for Disney's Animal Kingdom, but accidentally catch a bus for Hollywood Studios. So double check yourself so you don't waste any time trying to get into a park you don't have reservations for. Now, buckle in everyone, because we found a glitch in the matrix. There's a park ticket loophole that Disney's not going to tell you about but we will. On the Disney World website, it states very clearly that Disney park tickets are non-transferable, meaning you can't share a park ticket with a family member or friend. Remember when I told you about my friend who was put into Disneyland jail because she tried to use her friend's park ticket? Exactly. Now, for the most part, this is 100% true. Disney makes sure that the person using the ticket is you and only you, which is why they have you scan your fingerprint in the first place to make sure the correct person is continuously using these tickets. And that's not to be mean. More so, this is a matter of security. If you were to somehow lose your ticket, this system makes sure no one can steal it and use it themselves. But this also means that if you, say, go to Magic Kingdom and then you decide you want to give your park ticket for the next day to a different family member who's joining your group later on, that's not going to work. But here's the loophole Disney's not telling you about. Tickets are only non-transferable once they're activated. If you purchase a ticket through the Disney website, but you want to give it to someone else, you can assign it to another person that's linked in your friends and family list. Hypothetical situation, let's say you and your significant other decided to go to Disney World. You already bought the tickets and set up the park pass reservations, but a few weeks out, a family emergency pops up and you can't go. Since you can't really get a refund for those tickets, you decide to gift them to someone. You know that your friend and her sister were planning on going to Disney World around the same time, so if you connect them to your My Disney Experience account in the same way I explained earlier, you should be able to technically transfer those tickets to them since they haven't yet been used. Once again, that non-transferable language is very sneaky and makes you feel like you're boxed in. But as long as you haven't actually used your ticket yet, you should be able to reassign it to someone else. Now, there's one very important ticket option we haven't talked about yet, so let's talk about that now. Annual passes. Yep, talking about annual passes right now is tricky, and that's because most pass holder tickets are still currently unavailable and have been for a good long while. But I'll tell you what I do know about them currently. Annual passes are a way for frequent Disney World guests to eventually save money on paying for tickets over and over and over again. Before annual passes went dark, they were split into four different price range tiers. The most expensive tier, the Increda Pass, was the only one available for out-of-state residents to purchase. This pass could hold up to five park pass reservations and had no blockout dates. The middle tiers, the Sorcerer Pass and Pirate Pass, could only be purchased by Florida residents and had a few blockout dates here and there during select peak season days. And the cheapest tier, the Pixie Dust Pass, is still available for Florida residents to purchase. But it has a whole lot more blockout days to worry about, including weekends. Now, whether these tickets will return looking the same or not is still up in the air, and when they're actually going to return is also very iffy. But we do have a whole DFB video going into the tricky, tricky history surrounding Disney's annual passes that you can check out after this for a little more background on what in the blazes is going on here. But while we're still waiting for those out-of-state annual passes to return, let me give you a quick tidbit of advice that you'll more than likely still be able to apply once they're back in business. You only need one annual pass to get the discounts. A nice thing about having an annual pass, aside from the ability to get into the parks, are 
the included discounts and perks. With an annual pass, you'll get benefits like 20% off some dining, merchandise, and activities, park hopping all year round, free parking at the theme parks, access to exclusive merchandise releases, $99 photo pass downloads compared to the $169 or $199 you normally pay, $99 water park and sports option, which lets you visit the Disney water parks and golf courses year-round too, and several other nice little bonuses to have in your back pocket just in case. But here's the thing, all you out-of-state Disney guests, you don't have to get an annual pass for everyone in your party for everyone in your group to reap some of those benefits. As long as one person in your group has an annual pass and that person is with you, then everyone can feed off of those perks. For instance, if your group goes to a nice restaurant, then the annual pass holder can use their 20% discount on the table's entire meal. They're just gonna have to be the one paying for that meal, so you'd have to make sure you got cash or Venmo hooked up to pay the pass holder afterwards. If you're a family traveling together and you're booking a hotel, only one person has to have that annual pass to get the hotel discounts as well, which are often 25 or 30% off per night. Now, whether these benefits and ability to frequently visit the parks is worth what you spend on these out-of-state pass holder tickets is questionable. Right now, they're sitting at about $1,300 per year, and the answer will vary from group to group. So do your research, weigh the pros and cons, and be ready with your answer once these passes do go live on the website again, if they go live again. All right, one more ticket to talk about, those hard tickets, the separate ticket events. Magic Kingdom knows how to get into the holiday spirit, which is why they throw their seasonal after-hours parties, Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, on select evenings from August to December. These after-hours parties include exclusive offerings like snacks and shows, rare meet-and-greet opportunities, and lots shorter lines for all the rides. But you're not going to be able to waltz right into the party with just a regular theme park ticket. You're going to have to pay a whole other after-hours ticket price that are sometimes even more expensive than a regular ticket just to have access to these after-hours festivities. So if you're spending the day in Magic Kingdom, but you also want to spend the evening there too to see all the different holiday offerings, you'll end up paying double the amount for your fun-filled day in Magic Kingdom. The good thing is you don't have to. You can totally pick one or the other. Just because you go to the parks during the day doesn't mean you have to pay for the holiday party at night and just because you want to go to the holiday party doesn't mean you got to pay for a single day ticket during the day. Just remember that if you do stick with the holiday party ticket and you decide to ditch the regular day ticket, you won't be able to enter the Magic Kingdom until later in the day. After hours parties begin at 7 p.m. and last until midnight. But here's a big, big tip. You can start entering the park as early as 4 p.m. to get three extra hours of non-party time. Disney might not tell you this, but it absolutely is true. But here's the downside. Let's say you just wanna pay for a single day ticket, but the day you're planning on going to Magic Kingdom is a holiday party night. Unfortunately, the parks will close early for all single day ticket guests who don't have an after hours party ticket. And that means you'll have to leave as early as 6 p.m. No dinner, no fireworks, no nighttime shenanigans in the Magic Kingdom, period. What makes matters worse? Just because a park day is shortened by one of these events doesn't mean your standard day ticket price is gonna be any cheaper. So let's look at two days in December for comparison's sake, December 20th and 20th. 21st. December 20th is one of the evenings offering Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, but December 21st is not. So Magic Kingdom will be closing at 6 p.m. on the 20th and 10 p.m. on the 21st. And yet both single day tickets are priced at $147. So yeah, be aware and make sure to check the Disney Park calendar hours ahead of time before securing your Park Pass reservations. That'll make sure you don't accidentally have to cut your day short. Starting in January, After Hours events that won't cut other guests' park days short will be returning to Magic Kingdom and Disney's Hollywood Studios as another separate ticket option for guests. Much like the holiday parties, there'll be a few exclusive offerings available and complimentary snacks, as well as much shorter ride lines. But unlike the holiday parties, these events aren't themed and they won't start until the parks officially close at 10 p.m. for everyone else. But once the parks do close, you'll be able to stay in the parks until 1 a.m. To book one of these events, you can head over to the Disney World website now. These events are very limited and only extend out until March so far. So if you're interested, then you'll have to jump on them ASAP. And don't worry, once you have a holiday party ticket or after hours ticket, you will not have to worry about making a park pass reservation. All right, told you there's a lot to learn about Disney World's park tickets, and now you know, for better or worse. Like I mentioned before, I know some of this info can be really dense, so don't forget to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash park tickets so we can send over the digital list of all the info 
we talked about. That'll also sign you up for our free newsletter so you get all the details and updates about any discounts we find. And as I said before, there's a couple of other really great follow-up videos to this. Our Disney Genie Plus video is a great one. You can also watch our annual pass video if you're interested in that too. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.